Hello, welcome back to using the Eclipse Workbench. In this lesson, we're going to look at some features of the Eclipse Help System and then explore some navigation tips and tricks. Let's start with an example of context sensitive help. Here, we're in the Java perspective where we left off in the last lesson. Let's select Window Customize Perspective just to give ourselves something to work with. And then notice we have this Help button in the lower left hand corner. If we press that, it opens up a Related Topics Help panel on the right side of the window. We could also open this up using the F1 key in Windows or the Help key on a Mac. Let's click on the first link, Configuring Perspectives. This opens the Configuring Perspectives Help Topic. Now let's look at the toolbar at the top of the window. This first item, Show an External Window, if we press that, it opens up the same Help Topic in an external window. This just makes it a little easier to see and gives us more space to see the topic. The second button is called Show in All Topics. If we press that, it basically shows us where in the table of contents this topic is listed. So for example, we can see that Configuring Perspectives is listed under Workbench User Guide, under Tasks, under Working with Perspectives. And if we go back, we can also see the same context up at the top, Workbench User Guide, Tasks, Working with Perspectives. Next, let's try the search command. We'll press the search link down at the bottom of the screen and let's type Customize Perspective, press Go, and here we see the topics that come up from that search. Now let's look at the search toolbar buttons. This first one, Show Result Categories, toggles on and off the display of the result categories. Notice that this first category is Java Development User Guide. Now this topic may not be what we want. If we're mainly interested in the workbench, we might now want to include Java Development Topics. We can limit the search by coming up here to Search Scope and Expanding, pressing Advanced Settings, and here we're saying Search All Topics, we can say search only the following topics and we can say just search the workbench user guide. Press OK and now if we press go we've limited our search results just to the workbench user guide. We can also create predefined search scopes. So for example if we hit help, help contents, we can press the search scope link and, for example, we can see that the default now is one that we created as a default search scope. We can also create a new search scope. For example, we could create one called Java that only includes the Java Development User Guide. So if we have help topics that relate to a number of different plugins, we can create a series of predefined search scopes so we can limit our searches and find the topic we're interested in more quickly. Two other buttons to note on the Help Contents window are the Print button, which lets us print a selected topic or a selected topic and all subtopics, and the Refresh Show Current Topic button. This button is somewhat similar to the Show and Table of Contents, it's handy after a search. For example, if we do a search delete perspective and find that topic, if we press this refresh show current topic button, it shows us where in the table of contents this topic comes from. So in this case workbench, working with perspectives, tasks, and so on. Now the Eclipse Help System lets us place help bookmarks in any help topic. This button here bookmarks the current topic. So if we press that, 
bookmark it and then if we went back to customize perspective and found a topic there and bookmark it then we can go down to this bookmarks view and we can see both of these topics so we can quickly go from one to the other and up here we have buttons that allow us to delete and again we have this refresh button so we can find where we are in the table of contents. We can also get to our help bookmarks from the context help. Close this. Let's go back to our context help. By pressing the help button there. This over. And we can see we have a bookmarks link there that links also to our bookmarks. Now, bookmarks in Eclipse can be just a little confusing because there are two completely different types of bookmarks. There are help bookmarks, which is what we've just been working with, and there are resource bookmarks, which allow us to place a bookmark in any resource file so we can quickly find this place again, and they're completely separate. So let's take a look at the resource bookmarks just so we can keep them straight. Let's go to the test my library XML file. We'll go down to some point in the file. We'll select edit, add bookmark, and we'll call it XML. And now we've added a bookmark in this resource file. And we can see the little bookmark decoration over there. If we go window, show view, other, under general, select bookmarks, select OK, that opens the bookmark view, and here's our bookmark. So for example, if we navigate away from that and want to go back to the bookmark, we can just double click and go right back to that bookmark. Now, let's do a little review on perspectives that we talked about in the last lesson. Let's say we wanted to make sure that the bookmarks view is open the next time we use the Java perspective. How would we do this? Well, as long as we don't do window reset perspective or window close perspective, we don't have to do anything because Eclipse will remember our last layout, which includes this bookmarks view. However, if we want to make sure the bookmarks view is always open as part of the Java perspective, we need to remember to save it using window save perspective as Java OK and it's going to say Java already exists Do you want to overwrite and we'll say yes so now even if we close the Java perspective or do window reset perspective the bookmarks view will always be part of the Java perspective now let's get back to the help system the Eclipse help system contains a series of cheat sheets which are accessed under Help Cheat Sheets. A cheat sheet guides you through a series of steps to complete a specific task. Let's look at the Create a Hello World application cheat sheet, this very first one. We'll press OK to open it. And when we open it, we see it in the Cheat Sheets view, and we see it has a series of five steps to complete. For each task, we can press the question mark to get related help, and we can press the Click to Perform link to perform the task, and Click When Complete link to indicate that the task is complete. So, for example, let's press the click to begin, and it shows now that we've completed the introduction step, and the next step is open a Java perspective. So, we can press this click to perform, and it, since we're already in the Java perspective, it didn't have to do anything, but if we hadn't been, it would have opened the Java perspective. Now, the next step is create a project. If we close the cheat sheet in the middle and then reopen it,
it remembers where we were. So it remembers that we've done the introduction and we've done the open Java perspective and it knows right where to start. You can restart a cheat sheet using the pull down menu. For example, if we go restart, then it'll restart the cheat sheet from scratch. At this point, we've seen a number of the features of the Eclipse help system. Now let's look at some navigation features in Eclipse. We'll start with a new feature in Eclipse 3.3 that's called Quick Access. This is opened just by pressing Control and 3. So we'll press Control and 3 and it opens up this Quick Access pop-up window. Let's type the word book. As soon as we type that we can see we have a bunch of choices here. We have under an editors we have the book.java file which is open up here. We have a bookmarks view under views. Under commands we have add a bookmark, scrapbook page, more things about bookmarks, and so forth. So anything that has the word book in it, whether it's under editors, views, commands, menus, or new, appears in our quick access pop-up. So if we know part of the name of the command or resource, we can quickly find it without searching through the menus. Let's navigate to the book.java file by clicking there. And then let's try one more example. Again, we'll press Control 3. Now it gives us a previous choice, so if we wanted to go back to something we'd done earlier, we can. But let's just type in the letters P-E-R-S-P, -E which is part of the word perspective. We can see we've got a whole bunch of things related to perspectives. And then down here it says press Control 3 to show all matches. So let's press Control 3 a second time. And now we can see we've got an even longer list of everything that has the word perspective in it. So for example, if we go to the bottom of the list, we can easily find the Perspective Preferences menu choice. So Quick Access is a very handy way to find a resource or a command just by typing part of its name. Before we finish this lesson, let's look at two other navigation options in Eclipse. These two buttons up here, back and forward, work just like you'd expect, taking you to the last or next resource you were editing or looking at. For example, we're at the book.java file. Let's go to the text file here and then let's go over to the XML file. And if we press back, we'll just go back to exactly where we were. And we can also see here we've got all of our options back and forward in a pull-down menu. We can do shortcuts for these. As we can see in the tip there, Alt plus right is the same as forward and Alt plus left arrow is the same as back. The other navigation option is called Last Edit Location. This only keeps track of places where you've actually edited a file and made changes. So for example, if we go to the text file and make a change, then if we go to a different file, we can go back to the last edit location and it'll take us back to the last file and the exact location we were editing. Note that this also works if we're inside a file and have edited several different locations. It'll take us to each location we've edited. Whew. In this lesson, we've learned about the Eclipse help system and looked at quick access and some other navigation options. In the next lesson, we'll learn a number of useful keyboard shortcuts We'll learn how to customize and create our own keyboard shortcuts, and we'll learn how to export our preferences. This is the end of Lesson 4. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.